today, we're gonna read a book named um, At Home in the Coral Reef. Anyways, so this book is about coral reefs. That's what I'm gonna, that's all I'm gonna say because I don't wanna spoil this book for you. So let's get on with the intro. Woo! At Home in the Coral Reef. Down, down, down in the tropical clear blue sea lives a beautiful coral reef. The coral reef is a wonderful home for hundreds of kinds of fish and thousands of other kinds of creatures. The reef itself is made of zillions of tiny animals called polyps. Each tiny coral polyps catches food with its little arms called tentacles. The polyps share their food and live it so close together that their skeletons are connected. Some kinds of coral reef make soft skeletons that sway gently back and forth into the water. These polyps have eight tentacles. Other coral polyps make skeletons that are as hard as a rock. Their hard skeleton form a coral reef. A hard coral polyp has 12 or 24 or 48 or more tentacles. Together, over 50 kinds of coral, coral from this reef is a Caribbean sea. What are those pink things? Coral eggs. Once a year, a coral polyp have babies. Eggs and sperm pop out of the polyps and float up and up to the top of the blue sea. Their each fertilized egg becomes a baby, called a planua. Now, it is ready to search for its new home. The planua is completely covered with little hairs. It swims by waving them through the water, but it cannot swim very fast. Watch out for those hungry vessels. Just in time, a big wave carries the planua away to the crest, or top, of the coral reef. Here, the water is very shallow. Because it is shallow, the waves break and crash into the reef. Splash! Crash! The breaking waves make, their, make the water very rough. It's so rough that only a few animals can live here. A fireworm holds on tight. A school of blue tanks darts in and out, hunting for food. Sp crash! Splash! Will this be home for the planua? No, it's so rough. The planua is swept along, riding a wave over the crest to the lagoon. The water in the lagoon is calm. Although the lagoon seems peaceful, it is really a busy place. From top to bottom, at the top, a pelican gulps a pouch full of fish. At the bottom, a strategy slurps up and shrimp. Many animals looking for food in the lagoon are hard to see. An emerald clingfish hides in the blade of turtle grass. Clams and crabs hide in the sand. Such a busy place. Day and night in the lagoon. Flash, glow, blink. What could that, those lights be? They twinkle like stars in the sky, but they are all underwater. These lights are made by animals. Animals almost too small to see are twinkling. Brittle stars flash to scare away lobsters and crabs. Worms grow sh to show other worms where they are. Flashlight fish attract their food by blinking. Can Planua live here? No, it is too sandy. The Planua needs a rocky place. It floats along the red mangrove trees near the shore of the lagoon. Red mangroves can grow on salty water. Their roots grow out and hang down right into the ocean. Sponges and seaweeds grow on the roots. Millions of baby fish and baby shrimps start life in the water around the mangrove roots. There's a lot of food for them there. Will this be the home for the planoa too? No, the water is too shady for the planua. It turns away and swims to the shallow water near the beach of the lagoon. The sunshine hits the sandy beach. The sand was made by the ocean waves over thousands of years. The waves have pounded and 
the skeletons of the reef, animals and plants into the smaller and smaller bits. Eventually, the, the bits formed in so many grains of sand that they covered the bottom of the lagoon and they washed up on the shore to make a beach. Will this be the home for the planet? No, it is too shallow and too hot there. The planet catches a current to a deeper water. Oh no, the water is dirty. The water is so dirty that the corals are dying. The dirt smoothers the coral polyps and blocks the sunlight they need. Chemicals wash down the rivers from factories and farms poison the coral. In the dirty water, harmful bacteria grow over the coral and kill it. Careless divers hurt the coral too. They step on it and break it with their boat anchors. Without living coral, the fish and the other animals will leave. The planua cannot live here either. Luckily, a current carries it out of the lagoon, over the top of the reef, and down the other side of the reef deeper and deeper and deeper to a healthy part of the reef. At last, a safe spot for the planua to settle down. The spot is hard and rocky. It's sunny but not too hot. Gentle current bring the clean water and plenty of food. It will be a perfect home. The planua begins to change. First, it sticks itself into a safe spot. Then, around its, its mouth, it grows 12 little tentacles. Now it's a polyp. It looks like a flower, but it really is an animal. Under its soft body, the polyp starts to grow hard white skeleton. In a few weeks, it makes another tiny polyp exactly like itself. The polyps are connected to each other. Together, the polyps have 24 tentacles to, for catching food. The planoa is growing up to be a staghorn coral. More polyps grow and more and more. Here comes a reef butterfly fish. It eats corals. The coral polyps warn each other of the danger. Quick as a wink, they hug their tentacles in. They hide their soft bodies down inside their hard white skeleton. When the danger is past, the coral polyps slowly come out and open up their tentacles again. Many creatures in the reef are part partners that help each other hide or find food. A crab hides in the coral to escape from hungry octopus. A shrimp lives safely inside the vase sponge. At a cleaning station, goggies eat what they can clean from the teeth of the big grouper. The grouper holds its mouth wide open for the goggies. Away from the station, the grouper eats would eat the goggies. Even the tiny polyps have partners. The polyps get special food from the golden plants living just inside their skin. In return, the plants get a home. This partnership helps the coral grow big enough for, to form reefs. Down, 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 in a tropical clear blue sea, this coral reef is alive and well. The place where it lives is clean. Zillions of coral animals have been adding their skeletons to the reef for over 8,000 years. It takes thousands of years for the reef to grow, but only a few years for them to be destroyed. The reef and the other coral reefs are all around the world are in danger because the oceans are becoming dirty. Coral reef needs our help. What can we do to help little baby planua to grow up to, and become a big part of the coral reef? The first step is to discover how what we do on land that it affects in the life in the sea. All living creatures, including corals and people, need clean water. We all use water on our fam farms, in our suburbs, and in our cities. We throw many things into that water, make it dirty. This dirty water flows into rivers, lakes, and underground streams and eventually ends up in the sea. There, it hurts the coral reef and all the creatures that make it their home. But we can make a difference. 
We can make our rivers and lakes and oceans clean again. We can learn about life on the coral reef and share what we learn. We can help people everywhere to care about the amazing reef and the tiny coral animals that build them. Okay guys, so if you guys have seen the video, and by that video, I mean like the video, like the reading part, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Then you'll know that coral reefs are in danger. Um, yeah, that's true. Uh, if you guys didn't know about this, uh, I think you've been hiding under a rock because not only coral reefs. Well, the whole ocean is in danger. If you guys seen my last video, it's about um, saving the world, world peace and stuff. It's very similar because it's also about like saving worlds and stuff and that's also saving worlds saving oceans to be specific so I think that this is really important in, 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 to remind ourselves in our brain yeah in our brain that yeah there are still ocean 30 oceans in the world and we should probably do something about it but no one's doing it because everybody thinks that they cannot um only one person cannot do anything but in reality they everybody can do anything every everybody can do everything so if we don't do this um our worlds are gonna get in, in dangerous and probably by a few years later by maybe a few decades or a few years later our world it's gonna be very dirty it's gonna just it will just be very bad like the whole situation will be very bad so i think i should or we all should try to do something about it and yeah that was my two minute speech this book was very amazing one of my favorites really good like the art was so pretty like oh my gosh like how do you make this with a paintbrush how and maybe with water and stuff i don't know i'm really bad at painting so maybe that's the reason why i, under I don't understand or something like that i don't know they're very, like the paintings are so beautiful and like the message behind it is also very beautiful and i think since it's like that i will uh, love this like i would love to read this book anytime every time i really hope that you guys enjoy this video if you do enjoy it don't forget to click the right like button and subscribe if you are new and i will be back with another amazing book like this bye